everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. You made it through another week. What a fantastic day. Low humidity, nice breeze. Just perfect. It doesn't get any better than this. Can we look at the sky for Can we look at that? Look at these clouds, huh? Are they not the most beautiful clouds? Beautiful blue sky. My problem is I'll just sit here for half an hour and just stare at the clouds, trying to figure out if I can see some kind of figure amongst the clouds i just love it and uh but we got to get downstairs we've got a few things to talk about let's okay, get to we're it. back down the shop and there's a few things i wanted to uh talk about today um i went to the flea market last week i didn't really get a chance to tell you what i picked up i picked up a couple things let's get right to it okay one item i picked up uh at the flea market was this nice vintage cut right or cut right r i don't know what that last letter is for cut right <laughs> cut right -er. I don't know, but it's a. I, I think cut right would be the right way to say it. I don't know why they put that extra R in there. And the same thing with Detroit. Now this says Detroit R. I don't know. I they, I've seen other ones that says Detroit O. I, I don't. I don't know what that last letter is for. Anyway, uh, it's a vintage uh, grinding wheel dresser. And uh, if you've never seen one of these before, what they used, I'm going to demonstrate. I'm going to show you what it's about. We're not going to restore this tool. It's kind of original, but I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about grinding wheels and uh and bench grinders. okay what i want to show you here is uh i bought this uh, bench grinder probably over 30 35 years ago when i was a younger man and uh it has served me well it was a craftsman model but uh probably a generic brand that was imported from all over and uh the one thing you want to look for two things when you're looking for a bench grinder is uh you look for a ul listed uh ul listed motor uh, underwriters laboratories that's always a good start and uh, the rest of the features are pretty much standard on on the uh and you kind of get what you pay for. It seems that way with a lot of tools these days. You know, if you get a $25 grinder, you know, and it vibrates a little or it seems a little chintzy, that's because you bought a $25 grinder. I mean, that's, you know, if you're not going to use it or whatever, that's what you do. But, um, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the parts of it and the grind. Now, as you can see here, it has some safety features. And these safety features, believe it, you know, a lot of times you take them off or whatever. But with a bench grinder... There's some safety features that are worth having. Like, for example, uh, you'll have uh, wheel guards on both sides. Now, if you're using a, a wire brush or a buffing, you know, you, you could take them off because, uh, you know, you want access to more than just this little section. But when you're dealing with a grindstone, you're basically only using this small section here. And uh, it's always good to have a wheel guard on there because, and I've never seen it happen, and I'm sure there'll be somebody out there who's seen it happen, but, you know, these wheels can come apart because uh, a wheel is basically the only thing a grinding wheel is, is a bunch of abrasives that are held together and formed with a bonding agent or an adhesive, which makes up the grinding wheel, just like most sandpapers, things like that. But it's a, it comes out, looks like a stone. Now, usually they'll come with two stones for, uh, for the machine that you buy. And a lot of times they'll come with a coarse stone and a fine stone. Now, there are many different kinds of stones. There are stones that are meant for tool dressing, for cleaning up tools and sharpening tools and cutting tools, and they're super fine. Usually they're like a white or a pink. Or, and But when you get the gray stones, they're usually like a general purpose home shop stone uh, or grit. Here we have, it's a kind of a coarse grit. And like I said, on this side, it's a fine grit. Now, um, what happens is when these stones, they're made to wear down. Uh, what after a while, just like sandpaper or anything else, they're made to wear down and be replaced. Now, you as it wears down, there's a couple things you should now, do. Now, these are the uh, the rests for the stone where you're going to put rest your tool on. Now, I made these because I made them for a specific uh, tool rest, but a lot of times I have a groove in it and an angle for drill bits and things like that. I wanted a flat... Uh, a flat rest so I just made these and bolted it on but as the stone wears you want to move this in a little bit and there's adjustments because you don't want too much of a gap here you want a very fine gap between the stone and here so you don't have a tool get caught between the rotating stone 
and the uh, the plate. Now, most bench grinders will rotate at about 3,600, 3,700 RPM, although I have a slow speed one for my for using for my lathe tools in that that rotates at 1700 rpm it's called the slow speed grinder but uh, most of them will come like this 3600 or so and um because of that because you're rotating a stone they tend to vibrate a little bit so it's always important to either bolt your machine down or clamp it down heavy duty clamps to make sure that this isn't going anywhere when it starts up because they do vibrate a little and one thing i've always seen you always see on older machines is a lot of guys have this where this shield here tends to, and it's a good thing to have. The shield works good, but it tends to flop down. Now, I always wear eye protection and, and breathing protection when I'm on any machine, but uh, this is always a good thing to have is extra protection, you know, uh, so nothing hits you in the face or whatever. But it, you have to maintain this because it does tend to do this after a while. And all you have to do is take a nut driver, and you'll see there's a little nut here on the bottom that you tighten up here. And when you tighten that up like that, now it makes it so it won't flop down. So I've seen so many machines where that thing is just thrown out of the way, but just make it so that it's, uh, and then you'll have to do that periodically. Now I was very lucky because I learned the do's and don'ts about the grinders, uh, very early on. So I didn't, uh, have to worry about ruining any stones and things like that. But, uh, what happens is a lot of times with the stones, what clogs, the, the two things that can happen. It can clog up with different materials, depending on what you're grinding. Some metals tend to be a little bit gummy, some alloys, things like that. You, you try not to use, ever use aluminum because aluminum is, uh, an alloy that will, will clog the wheel up in, in no time, but you know, it's been done. But uh, even steel will get in into into that uh, between the grit and the uh, abrasive, as you can see here. You can see some shine, and and that's just normal. So um, what you want to do is you want to use your grinding wheel dresser to, to expose new uh, grit, new sharp grit, and also to uh, level out the wheel because sometimes, depending on how you use the wheel, sometimes guys might use one side more than the other, or the corners might get rounded off. Now. Uh, I learned a long time ago when using the wheel, you know, let the wheel do the work. Don't apply a lot of excess pressure and move the item back and forth. So you're constantly using the whole wheel. A lot of times, and this is, it happens, guys that, you know, weren't instructed on how to use it. If they got to take a corner off, they'll go right into the middle of the wheel here and wear this off. And then what happens is you'll take the corner off, but you also put a little indentation in the wheel. And that's a no-no. And, you know, as, as far as using the side of the wheel, they tell you never use the side of the wheel. I don't know anybody that at one time or another hasn't had a, uh, a, a where you needed a totally flat side and touched the side of the wheel. But you're not supposed to put any pressure or anything on the side of the wheel. But it's just in the regular shop use, you'll always, you know, have guys that'll just because this is always flat. And so true. to uh, clean up your stone and to get your stone all ready to be used, because like I said, when the stone gets dull, it'll overheat the two, whatever you're using. So that's why a lot of times it might feel sharp to your finger, but you have to do this every so often to, uh, to expose the new cutting grit. And so your tools don't get overly hot. Um, this steer, uh, this grinding wheel dresser has two flats on the bottom here. You could see, and that's to rest on top of here like this. And what you do is you hold it here like this you address it to the wheel and you go back and forth like this now these spinning wheels will dig into the wheel uh, and it will expose new grit now there are different type of dressers there are stone there are stick type dressers that you can just push it in like that i have that for my other wheels and there are a diamond stone dressers which are very good too but again i use those for my um, the white wheels and the pink, you know, the wheels that are really fine. But for the, this over here, these work very well for the uh, general purpose gray stones. And I'm going to show you what this looks like in real time, how to clean this up and uh, and get it across. Now, it is important, and you should always wear a mask, a, a dust mask, but it is more important to wear a dust mask when you're doing this operation or some kind of 
breathing protection because, uh, like I said, you're you're exposing this and it's getting into the air. But uh, here it is. We did the wheel. Just you know, it, it exposed the new grit here. It you could feel it. It feels a little bit sharper. That's basically how you do it. Now the important thing is when you're you're going to uh, to use your tool. Like we let's say we want to flatten this side out. I'm going to show you how you would do it on the tool so that you use the entire section of the wheel. Now, another good reason to dress your wheels is because a lot of times, sometimes they, they wear on one area more than the others, and they will run out of true, meaning that uh, when this, this will wobble, because you'll see, if you look close between the edge of the the plate here and the wheel, you'll see it going in and out as it spins, and that means it's not running around. It's not all. It's not perfectly round. So the dresser will help address that. And you can see on my fine wheel here, as I spin the wheel, look over here at this area here. You can see it's not running 100% true. It's just coming in and out just a little bit. So I got to dress this wheel for sure. But I also wanted to show you before I dress it. Um, it's important to have water. Or some kind of cooling agent uh, here because when this when your tools get hot always dip them never let them get too hot but I want you to notice the grain pattern here because we use the coarse wheel look at the uh, you know you see how that that's the finish that that coarse wheel will leave and I'm going to compare that to the fine wheel after we dress it now I'll be honest I haven't dressed this wheel since I bought the machine 30 years ago but you can see the difference now it's definitely running more true. It has a nice surface now. And if we look at here, if we look at the uh, edge here, you could see it uh, It did a nice job of, of taking away material and leaving a, a decent surface on here. Okay, next up I picked up this lovely bulb. Uh, this was $5. I stole this. I literally stole this for 5 bucks. This is, and when I say it's a, it's a bulb, this is a, when I say it's a big bulb, this is a standard light bulb here. Okay, look at the size of that thing. It is tremendous. And you can always tell a power hungry bulb just by the way they're constructed. Because you could see the filament, the thickness of that filament in there. And I'm hoping that because that filament is intact, I'm hoping it works, but you never know until you try it. Now, uh, it came with this base too, you could see here. But I'm not going to use this base. This is called, the base on this is called a mogul base. Okay, this was a heavy duty base, much wider than the standard A19 or Edison base. This is a E26 or E27. E stands for Edison, 26 or 27 stands for the millimeters. Now what's funny is, in Europe they use a 27, here in the US we use a 26. But they're kind of interchangeable because it's only a millimeter difference. But you can tell some some uh, sockets might be a little tight. If you ever get a real tight one, you might need an E26 instead of the E27. But uh, you can see here this is a 60-watt commercial electric. You don't see too many of these around. But uh, we wanted to fire this baby up. I love I love bulbs, you know, I'm a big bulb guy, but we got to clean it up first. And to clean this up, what I like to use, because this has some, you know, I don't know where this was, you know, some, some rough duty. You can see that dirt on there. And uh, what I like to use is steel wool. Now, it's funny how steel wool has kind of fallen to the wayside, especially since Scotch-Brite and things like that came out. But I'm a, I'm a firm believer for certain things. Steel wool is is the bomb, and this is my some of my steel wool. And look at this, look at this old Maxwell House can. Look, somebody marked steel wool. That wasn't me. I probably got this somewhere. And uh, you can see here the different types. Now, steel wool uh, traditionally comes in in coarse, medium, fine, but uh, what they're rated as is double O, triple O, quad O. So uh, four O is the finest and that'll be like real fine like this really fine you know and then double o is more coarse like this so depending on what you need you would buy it and you can see here here's the rating you can see 4030 and one two three four i've never even seen these that must be super coarse like my copper pads that i use but a lot of times you'll use triple o uh, or this is see this triple O this is what you use between shellacking 
this is really good. They call it extra fine, but Quado is super fine. And uh, so we're going to use this. We're going to use some uh, steel wool and uh, and a little a Windex or a glass cleaner to clean up the uh, the bulb. It always works. I always find this works good. It doesn't scratch if you use the right one. It's hard to scratch glass. Now, as you know, my dad, he was an oil truck driver. He used to drive for Petro, Petroleum Heat and Power, for 40 years. And and uh, when when he first started off as a, a young man, um, you know, your seniority, you have low seniority. So what happened was they would lay off the guys during the summer because there wasn't much coal. You know, you don't use a lot of oil during the summer. You'd use it during the winter. And uh, so during the summer, my father would be a lifeguard and he would do all kinds of jobs for the first five years or so until he had enough seniority where they kept him all year. But uh, one of the jobs he used to do, he used to Simonize a couple cars a day. And uh, back then, you know, Simonizing was hard, but he would Simonize like detail cars. And um, one thing he did, he used to love this stuff. This is his, as a matter of fact, he bought this. This is a Bonami. It's a glass cleaner and it's a, uh, it comes in an aerosol container. And I'll tell you, the one thing nice about these, uh, this aerosol compared to the regular Windex or Glass Plus, this stuff works fantastic. He swore by this. This and Quad O Steel Wool. He would do the windows uh, for the cars he did and people just could not believe. It was like looking out of uh, a brand new car. So he always, <laughs> and every once in a while he would do my car and uh, and I always remember this. So um, I like this spray. If you can find this, it's really good. Okay, it's all cleaned up and ready for testing. Um, I love these old bulbs. Now there are a couple scratches on the glass that you know it's 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 a commercial bulb, so I'm sure it had some a rough life or whatever. But we got most of it off in here. You can see how pretty that looks. We cleaned the bottom. We did this with Scotch Bright. You don't want to do this with steel wool because there are little openings here, and you don't want any metal filings getting in there. So a little Scotch Bright on here with a little leftover polish that was on there. Cleaned this base up real nice. Now, if you look at the top, I'm, I'm, it's gonna be a little difficult to see. I'm gonna try and get this here so you could see it. Um, there, maybe you could see it right there. But it does say, um, on the top here, it says Westinghouse, and it says 1,000 watts, 120 volts, USA. I don't know if you could see that, but uh, yeah. So we'll plug this in later, we'll suit up plug this in and uh you know what this reminds me of do you remember the old frankenstein movies remember when dr frankenstein was down in his laboratory and uh he had all these great gadgets going around and spark makers and and all this cool stuff and do you remember how excited he was when the monster came to life i love that movie it still holds up today so let's see what we can do. Have some fun later on tonight with this. Bulb. Now to test out that bulb and all my other bulbs, I made these up uh, years ago. And what this is is it's regular PVC square fence tubing. You know the fence post tube. So I took that. I I made some wood so it seals off the ends here. And uh, what this is is basically a tester. And I put a heavy duty cord on, which I probably cut off of a microwave when I was on one of my walks or whatever. But uh, nice heavy duty cord porcelain socket we'll put that bulb in there we'll go outside later on when it gets dark i even put uh, uh rotating feet on here so i can have the bulb you know rotate one way or another and what we're going to use is uh, something called a variac a variac is a uh, generic name for an auto transformer or basically it is the world's coolest dimmer switch <laughs> there's a lot more to it but it's really good for firing up old uh, electronics and things like that that you don't know and you can bring it up to voltage slowly we're going to set that up outside let's have some okay fun. here is the setup here you can see we have power we're running the high amperage cord out here and uh we have power to both the light and now we're just going to add voltage until we get it <laughs> It's moving. It's moving. 
Didn't I tell you we have fun tonight? All right. Thanks very much for tuning in. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>